Hi, Spring fans. In this installment, we're going to look at some of the things that most distinguish GraphQL from other protocols. First, that it supports long-lived streaming data. You know, you can imagine the type sensor data, chats, stock ticker feeds, you know, that kind of ongoing, always fresh feed of data, as well as short-lived request response type interactions out of the box. We've already looked at queries and mutations. And in this video, we'll look at a third type of interaction in GraphQL, subscriptions. Subscriptions are explicitly designed to be conducted over a streaming protocol. The GraphQL Java project lead, Andy Mark, has the 411 on the intentions and the nuances. Let's talk to him. Okay, so the third kind of operation supported by GraphQL, by GraphQL Java and Spring GraphQL also is next to queries and mutations subscription. Um, a subscription is a long running process that informs the client when some event on the server happened. So in, it's it's actually quite different compared to query mutation. A query you send, you get a response. A mutation you send, you get a response. A uh, subscription is really you subscribe to something that will happen on the server, and at every time this something happens, the server informs the client of, for example, a new order was created, a new customer registered, a new um a new friend was assigned, whatever it is. So this makes it, from an execution point of view, also very different. In GraphQL Java, it's built on a reactive publisher. So the execution starts by, by producing a publisher. In Spring GraphQL, that's a flux. And this publisher is then used to deliver all upcoming events. And in Spring GraphQL, it's actually implemented either via WebSocket or RSocket protocol. Thankfully, GraphQL is protocol agnostic in design. It doesn't specify how to support the streaming semantics of subscriptions. This flexibility is an ideal fit for something like Spring Boot, which has tons of infrastructure out of the box. Spring for GraphQL works with HTTP, but also with WebSockets and, as we'll see in this video, with RSocket. Let's see what Spring for GraphQL lead Rosin Stoyanchev can tell us about the profound possibilities and benefits of building on such flexible infrastructure and what it implies for us, the users. Um, so, um, as uh, we mentioned previously, GraphQL um, is agnostic to the protocol. And in Spring for GraphQL, we support um, requests coming in over HTTP, over WebSocket, and over RSocket. And I think subscriptions are a good way to um, put this in context. Um, subscriptions are essentially about streaming and streaming events. And if you run GraphQL over HTTP, um, essentially that means running over uh, service end events or streaming over service end events. And, and that's where you have the least amount of um, features or support for streaming type um, uh, needs. Uh, for example, with SSE, there, there's no uh, there are no heartbeats. Uh, there are no. Uh, there's no way to indicate uh, that a stream is ending uh, with success or with error. Uh, there's no way for the client uh, to cancel um, in an explicit way. Um, if we move to WebSocket, um, basically we have one connection that can be used uh, for for many requests, uh, and there's the multiplexing nature. So we only need one connection to. Uh, send and potentially stream many requests. Um, and with RSocket, we have the ability to do ping and pong, um, although these things are also not built in. Um, uh, but we do have um, a, a, a richer set of uh, features and the client is allowed to cancel. But in order to make this work, uh, there is a small GraphQL over WebSocket spec. And uh, that defines uh, how client and server talk to each other in order to be able to send uh, these GraphQL requests and responses and streams over WebSocket. Um, and then we have RSocket and RSocket is a uh, protocol that supports streaming in a first class way. It uh, can run over 
uh, WebSocket, uh, but it can also run over TCP, so it doesn't depend on web um, at all. And um, what's interesting is uh, that you, you can run GraphQL over RSocket, which itself runs over WebSocket, uh, but you can also run GraphQL over WebSocket. So you may wonder, you know, what, what do you get from, from, from these layers? Um, well, when you're running GraphQL over RSocket over WebSocket, uh, WebSocket just gives you the underlying transport for carrying the messages. Um, our socket adds a variety of features on top of that. Uh, it automatically sends heartbeats. Um, it supports streams in a really good way. Um, it provides cancellation from the client side. Um, it allows um, resuming of streams. Um, it has lots of nice features uh, for streaming, including um, reactive stream style back pressure across the network so that the client can actually uh, cause the server to slow down with sending of messages. Um, and for us in Spring for GraphQL, it was uh, quite easy to add the RSocket support. We did not need an extra spec because the protocol itself is already rich enough uh, with everything needed for the streaming. And we also already had all kinds of infrastructure in the Spring framework and in, um, in Spring Boot uh, to be able to do that fairly easily. Interestingly, Rostin also did most of the work to integrate RSocket into Spring itself. RSocket is a fully integrated option with support in Spring Security, Spring uh, Integration, Spring Boot, etc. You should also check out the Spring Tips video uh, introducing RSocket in more depth. Now, let's dive into our demo and see how GraphQL and RSocket uh, can make building subscriptions and streaming type services even simpler. In the previous examples, we looked at HTTP. GraphQL can work over HTTP as a transport, but it is incidental. It doesn't, it's not required. Quite the contrary, in fact. Uh, the GraphQL Java engine, in particular, was designed in such a way that it's not beholden uh, to a particular implementation of HTTP or to HTTP itself, right? So if you want to use the GraphQL Java engine with a servlet engine, you can, right? Spring provides the glue code to make that lifecycle work. Ditto for uh, Graph GraphQL Java and the Netty HTTP engine. But going a step further, we've also had good support for working with GraphQL over WebSockets. And this is particularly useful for certain kinds of interactions uh, like subscriptions, which we're going to look at just a little bit more uh, in this video. But both HTTP and WebSockets uh, serve their purposes. But, uh, but you know, if you're trying to build homogenous services in a data center, I would argue that there is a better way to to, uh, to conduct your data over the wire, and that is RSocket, which is, amazingly, yet another protocol that was created by Meta, nay, Facebook, uh, as a way to get around uh, some of the limitations of HTTP2 and gRPC. It was, uh, it's a flexible that natively supports reactive back pressure on the wire. It supports multiple different message exchange patterns, including but not limited to request and response, fire and forget, streaming, bi-directional communication, uh, and more. Uh, and it's payload agnostic, so it doesn't. It has its own co the concept of content negotiation, but it doesn't care if you use JSON or XML or Avro or Thrift or Message Pack or you know your own thing. It just doesn't matter, right? It, it's not. Uh, it doesn't have to be Google Protocol Buffs in particular, right? It can be anything you like. So I quite like RSocket. It's natively supported in Spring. And now with this release, we also have good support for running GraphQL uh, on top of RSocket. So let's go ahead and add RSocket. We're going to use Spring Boot 2.7 RC1 as before. We're going to bring in GraphQL and we'll bring in the reactive web support just for the encoders and all that. If you, you know, it's, I often, I imagine you're going to have these both uh, for a lot of applications if they're public facing, for example. Uh, and because you can actually run RSocket on top of WebSockets, for example, and then you can run GraphQL on top of that. I know, it's a little bit crazy, but you can do some amazing things. You can have clients that speak RSocket from Android, for example, using your WebSocket connection, uh, which in turn can be used to conduct GraphQL. So, okay, let's, uh, let's open this up. Actually, I don't want to call this demo. That's not a great name. Let's call this RSocket. Hit generate. Open that up. Alrighty, so first things first, we're going to create some schema. So go source main resources, 
GraphQL. Uh, whoops, GraphQL. I'm going to create a file here called schema dot graph or just call it uh, rsocket dot graphqls and we'll create a you know a root type as always and this type will have a simple endpoint called hello uh, or just greeting just a single greeting that returns a type of greeting which in turn has a field called greeting uh, of type string so let's implement that as always uh, by going to our Java code here and we're going to create a type called greeting string greeting okay and it's a regular controller which is interesting right because again we don't have to change anything here to make this work there there is such a thing as an r socket controller uh in spring framework and you can use that if you like but this is not that this is a graphql controller uh whose transport will configure to be r socket okay so uh greeting controller and we're gonna have an endpoint here called greeting uh, and it'll return a single solitary greeting. Okay. Nope. New greeting. Hello world. And this will be a query mapping endpoint. Now, unlike HTTP and Spring Boot, if you want RSocket, you have to opt into it. It's not enough to just have the um, the uh, auto configuration library on the class path. So I have to opt into having an RSocket service running on port 9191. If I want to use RSocket uh, and with GraphQL, I have to specify the mapping as well. And you have to do the same thing for WebSockets if you choose to go down that path. Um, and then, of course, if, if you're using HTTP, you can specify a port. I'll just choose a random one. Uh, okay, good. So let's start this application up. All righty. Now, I want to talk to this. In order to use, talk to it, I'm going to use the fantastic... Uh, uh, RSC command line client from my colleague and friend uh, Toshiaki Maki who's uh, on the Tanzu team on the spring team uh, and he wrote this RSC command line tool as a like a curl for RSocket okay uh, it's there are several releases available for different operating systems including uh, you know Intel x86 Apple uh, PC Linux and PC Windows right um, there's also a Java jar for those of us like me who are running on Apple's M1 architecture, not the Intel architecture. And I'm sure that at some point, as soon as GitHub Actions supports a runner for ARM, that, that'll be among the supported options here. But in the meantime, it doesn't matter. We have the jar, right? It's just a regular jar. This code, by the way, is written using Spring uh, and Spring Native. So it's actually Java code that gets compiled into native binaries. Um, and so you're fine using either one, any of them. It's using the same library underneath the hood that we're using to, uh, to build this. Okay, so we've got this here. I've got Java minus jar. RSC, right? I can just run that. Now, uh, to be fair, uh, this incantation is a little bit hairy. So let's, you know, I have to take this a little careful. Java minus jar, RSC, and the data mime type equals application. Uh, and by the way, this is the same uh, mime type for both uh, HTTP and RSocket. So you get a very convenient way to understand that this is our socket data being sent over um, over our uh, this is GraphQL data being sent over our socket so dash dash data equals quote quote curly bracket curly bracket um, and then the query quote query quote quote uh, and then it's just hello isn't it no it's greeting that's right greeting and the data that we want back is greeting so it's a, a single greet. It's greet, a single greeting that has a string field called greeting. Okay, um, and then we want to call TCP localhost ninety one ninety one, uh, and then maybe even do you know maybe we can do dash dash debug. Why not dash dash debug? No hand. Oh, we need to specify the route. Uh, so oops. now to be honest with you. I find this uh, uh, the incantation to use RSC to send this GraphQL data on the command line is a little hairy, and I get kind of confused. And it's no fun watching me kind of you know try and then back out and try and back out. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to run some pre-assembled scripts. I know, I know, rabbits up my sleeve, but uh, you know it's not that bad if you can if you can look at the query. So Java minus jar RSC, right? Next line, it's a, re a the message exchange pattern that we're using for our socket is a request. 
the route for the request is the GraphQL mapping endpoint that we, we configure in the properties. The content type, the media type, the MIME type is application forward slash GraphQL plus JSON. And that's the same MIME type if you're using HTTP or R socket. So both content negotiation mechanisms can look at the, look at the MIME type and go, oh, okay, I'm going to treat this like GraphQL data. Uh, and the request that we're sending is, um, you know, a query to the endpoint. Normally, we just send this bit, right? Normally, we just send curly bracket, curly bracket, and then and then inside that we have the um, greeting, greeting. Now, this is the field, and this is the subfield, the string, and this is the uh, field that returns the graph, the greeting object. Um, normally, if you're making a query, it's it's uh, it's optional, but you can say query curly bracket. So this is actually, you know, it could be quote query space curly bracket greeting greeting um but if you're if you omit the query here right there if you omit that if you omit it there it's fine uh but it, and it is optional so and then finally we're going to make a request uh to uh tcp localhost 9191 and we're going to do dash dash debug to see all the message frame information so let's go ahead and run this one first okay so there's all that cool information about the request and uh what got sent and you know all that kind of stuff. I think it's really interesting to look at that. Here's the query. Uh, here's the data that we got back, and you can see that final result right there reflected on the console. Now, one interesting opportunity here is that GraphQL also supports uh, another kind of query called a subscription. Now, we haven't looked at subscriptions before uh, because you don't use them very often, but they're very useful when you do need them. I mentioned earlier that you could use WebSockets to support certain long-lived use cases, for example, chats and sensor data and feeds and all that. Well, uh, normally when you do that with HTTP, you, you have to switch on the spring support for building WebSocket endpoints to consume the uh, subscription information because HTTP is a poor fit for long running kind of uh, conversational sort of streams of data like that. Um, so in this case, since R sockets is very well intended for both, we don't have to do that. We can use R socket and GraphQL, and that's it. Let's register a subscription. We're gonna create a subscription, and the um, the data that we're gonna re return is uh, greetings. And we're gonna return, you know, normally we would just say, you know, bracket, bracket, but in it, because we have multiple values, but here, because it's a subscription, just return one, right? You're gonna get one of those over time, so many of them, but for each individual response, it'll just be one. I don't know. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me either, but just remember, this is not what you would, it, intuitively, I think this should be pluralized, you know, uh, but it, it's not. Okay. So subscription, and then you actually have to implement the handler. And this is, as you can imagine, very easy to do. So uh, we're going to create a stream of greetings. Um, and, and that is what we said here, right? Greetings, plural. So plural versus singular here. Uh, we're going to create a sequence, a reactive stream of values. And the reason we're going to do this, is, the way we're going to do this is to use reactive publisher types. And this is great. This is exactly the kind of thing for which reactive programming is per perfect. Perfect uh, uh, is long running sort of, uh, you know, non blocking uh, uh, streams of data. Okay. So we're going to create a stream supplier, new supplier of type greeting, new greeting, hello world at instant dot now. Alrighty, delay elements of second one, and then take, let's say 10 results. I don't wanna stream all day after all, it could just keep going forever. Uh, but I'll just limit it to just 10 results staggered by one second each. Okay, so there's our subscription endpoint. And again, this is standard GraphQL regular, you know, there's nothing special about it, uh, about this. This is, there's no indication that we're using our socket here. We don't need to worry about it. Uh, we've already specified that we want our socket in the properties, and that's and that's enough. Um, we've got our subscription here, subscription endpoint, returning greetings. Uh, let's restart. Okay, so just as before, I've got a pre-written uh, incantation we can look at. Let's examine it. You can see here I'm using the message exchange pattern called stream instead of request. Uh, the MIME type is all the same. The route is the same. The debug and the host and port are the same. The only thing that's different is that, you know, remember that optional query? Well, you can't optional. You have to you have to say subscription if you want to get a subscription. You can't leave that out. It, it won't know. So otherwise, it's it's the same. It's greetings instead of greeting. 
uh, so plural, right? But otherwise, it's exactly the same, and I've specified subscription. So let's go ahead and run that. And there you are. Every second, for 10 seconds, you'll see results trickling out here with the updated timestamp. Not bad, huh? This is one of the really powerful things about uh, the auto configuration here is that we can layer these things for you automatically. And if you want to do it over our socket, great. And by the way, our socket itself can in turn uh, be conducted over other transports. So you could actually do our socket over web sockets, and you could do GraphQL over our socket over web sockets, right? Uh, which is mind bending. And there are some applications for that. You might, for example, uh, want to have an Android client that talks web sockets to your R socket service. Um, you know, it can speak R, it can speak web sockets on the client. Uh, maybe it's easier to pass through, you know, whatever uh, and 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 points you have, whatever. And lots of flexibility here. And the point is, it's all within a few properties of configuration uh, to to get that. Not bad, huh? By this point, we know how to build queries, subscriptions, and mutations. These are the three main top-level types that you're going to need to care about uh, in a GraphQL application. At this point, you know how to build an endpoint that a client can consume. Now, in the next, next video, we're going to look at how to build a client.